What's going on, YouTube world and YouTube tribe? Thank you for joining me on this lovely Monday afternoon for, you guessed it, the title sold you, WWE Monday Night Raw Review. Um, just want to say thank you to everybody who's joining me today to watch this video, new and old. Uh, yeah, not going to take up too much of your time. We're going to get straight into it. Oh, let me get my notes here. I always take that. I take down notes now, so I know exactly what to talk about. Um, I think Raw was in Orlando yesterday. I want. I don't. I can't remember if it was. Yeah, I think it was Orlando. But um, we we kick it off with the return of the missing, and nobody knows why I'm missing. Randy Orton. Randy Orton returns. Oh, so my, uh, I just got a little comment. That was my little uh, thing going off for the comments. When y'all leave comments, um, Randy Orton returned basically to a thunderous ovation. You know, I think this is the first time. Yeah, I think the the last time Randy was uh, on Raw. He, it was in the in the Thunderdome, so I think this is like the first time since the Thunderdome, Randy. I mean, since you know before the start of the Thunderdome, Randy has been back in front of the live audience. So we get uh, he's just basically happy to be here. He does the whole welcome to Monday Night Raw, and uh, before he could get into, you know, he just said he was sitting at home, you know, watching the show, and. Before he could get into any further, he gets interrupted by Matt Riddle, who is also happy to see him. You know, he's he's delighted. You know, then he break he break out to this funny story about how he how he how him being gone reminded him of his uh, his father. Or I think he said his father or stepfather that uh, went to go get some milk and and never and got lost and never came back. <laughs> you know, Riddle he got to have his little weird. You know, you know what he, uh, you know they try to simulate he does moments. Um, Randy, or then he tries to reunite RK, bro. So Randy Orton basically tells him, no, we're done. You know, we had a couple of matches. We had a good run. We made some shirts. But, you know, he's done. He doesn't want to be part of RK, RK bro anymore. And, you know, he was doing... He tells he tells really look you was doing fine I was doing fine before the tag before we started taming up you was doing fine while I was gone so it, it doesn't you know you don't have we don't need to be a tag team you know he works better when he's solo so this come uh, comes out AJ Styles who admits that he's been trying to break uh, Riddle and he, he said who would have thunk it that instead it, it wasn't the scooter it wasn't them beating him up. It was a broken heart by Randy Orton, from Randy Orton, who um, basically broke his heart because he said he didn't want to team up with him. And it, it, it like you, it made the Riddle. I love Riddle's character because it's so much. It it, it, it forces you to be like, oh, <laughs> like like you just had to go, oh, like what the like he he's so adorable, like you you're adorable, like his little his little weird. Innocent play. It's like you hate to see him hurt. He's just like, oh, okay. Why you do that, Randy? And then the crowd was cheering for them to to continue. RK bro, the crowd was even into how sad Riddle was. And uh, it I get this was set up Randy Orton versus AJ Styles because uh, I think AJ was taunting Randy to the point where Randy basically tells him that since he's back, he wouldn't have a match against AJ Styles. By himself, you know, tell, uh, we're affirming that he doesn't want Riddle at ringside. Um, we go back backstage um, with Bar uh, Baron Corbin, out of all people, who uh, he basically is there on the on a little invitational whatevers, and uh, I guess Baron was uh, uh, was invited to Raw was invited to Raw by Jinder Mahal to take care of. Uh, uh, Drew McIntyre, and if he do so, Drew he will help uh, uh, Baron out of his uh, financial struggles. And so he basically, 
So that basically sets up the first match of the night, which is uh, the Baron Corbin versus uh, Drew McIntyre. So the match in itself was good, you know, Drew dominated for the most part, and then like doing the doing the like I guess towards the end of the match, well he was getting ready to set uh set Baron Corbin up for the Claymore, but Baron's like you know pleading with him that he need this, he need the money to help him. And then he was like, you know what? Uh, I honestly, I'm kind of feeling sorry for you, Baron. He grabs the mic. He tells Baron he's feeling sorry for him, and he was like, he was gonna just claim more him, but he's just like, you know what? I'm not gonna claim more you, man. How much do you need to get to get to get you on and get you back on your feet into a bed, into a, a freaking shower? And he was like, he was like, all he needs is a hundred thousand dollars. And he looked, Drew McIntyre was like. What? And he's like, he's like, that's all I need. You know, a hundred thousand dollars in IV that would help. And he's like, he said, well, how, you know, you know, in a clever way, he goes, well, if you need one thousand dollars. How about two thousand dollars? Hell, well, let's make it three thousand dollars. You know, he was doing, he was really was sitting in for the Claymore, and he Claymore Baron Corbin and won the match. Uh, it was okay. At first, I wasn't gonna. First, I didn't really like it, but the end, they kind of saved the match. Uh, we got the second match, which is the returning Jeff Hardy. We all know that Jeff Hardy was out for two weeks due to COVID-19 restrictions. I think they said he had a, uh, he caught COVID, but, you know, they had him out for two weeks. And uh, he came, he's back, and now he's in a match versus uh, uh, Karrion Cross. Which is which? I'm like, okay. So we if automatically because of the rumors of how this was supposed to go, I automatically knew who was going to win the match. But it was good, you know. Jeff Hardy this time. Uh, Jeff Hardy got dominated by Karen Cross. You know, he uh, Jeff Hardy did have his offensive moments, but in the end, he would uh, he would uh, tap out to the cross jacket from Karen Cross, who after who was getting ready to leave the ring. And then he got mad and came in and put uh, Jeff Hardy in the uh, in the cross jacket again, and uh, then left the ring. Um, no, uh, no, uh, my boy uh, uh, Keith Lee was not on the program today. I was kind of upset about that. Kind of bummed out that we didn't get a Keith Lee match, um, and that he wasn't on the show at all. Like he didn't even do a promo, or nothing. That kind of scares me because. Last time he had a couple of matches, he won one. Now he's gone. I don't want him to be gone a whole bunch of time, a whole length of a, you know, year again. Um, we will get to the third match, which will be Alexa Bliss versus Dewdrop. <laughs> um, it was that was a decent match. It it wasn't bad. I just I hate the it just I hate the little cringe worthy moment where Dewdrop. Is getting ready to go attack Alexa, but obviously um, they switch the camera switch to on to uh, they switch on to what you gonna call it onto uh, Lily and Lily is just sitting there. And then she go, she winks at Dewdrop. I'm like, really? Obviously that was CGI. And then they cut. You know, they it, it's like they makes you feel like that match was pre taped because they had to cut there and then all of a sudden. They either either cut there if it was live. They on um, for us. They cut you know to that pre tape moment, only to go back to the live moment and then right at the perfect time with Dude drops you. Maybe she just weaked at me, and I'm just like, oh god, that was so that was so cringeworthy. You know why? I, they I really don't understand what they're trying to go with this whole Lily thing, but they please. I just don't want it to be cringeworthy, and it's just been it's just been cringeworthy. But other than that. The match was good, and uh, uh, Dude Drop would get beat by Alexa Bliss. Um, then we would go into, I think it was a couple, I think it might have been a backstage moment, I forgot. But we go to the fourth match, which is Samus versus Ricochet. Now, this was actually a, a pretty decent match. I like, I like Ricochet. I like his high flying style. Because Ricochet, just like Montez Ford, he could really put it on. High flying. He takes the best. He sells moves the best. He's the best. If we if we're going to talk about like who's the best seller, who sells the moves the best, we got to put Ricochet in there. Cause Ricochet is like the best seller in this current lineup or roster. 
Um, but yeah, the move, the Ricochet, you no, know, they just the Ricochet and Sheamus, they put on a very pretty good match. Almost, I could say it was almost the match of the night. Is was for a couple of matches later on, but it was it was one of the best matches of the night. Um, but Sheamus would ultimately get the win using his face mask, where they say got I guess the face mask got some metal type plating in it, and he used that to his advantage to get the win over Ricochet. But then, right immediately after the win, you know, you see Samus holding up the title, and then he stops and look. And that's because Damian Priest comes out and interrupts uh, Samus' big victory moment. They get into a little ger uh, verbal spar, and um, Damian then waits for his opponent, who happens to be John Morrison. And uh, this leads into the fifth match, which is Damian Priest versus John Morrison. Now, this match in itself was good, too. It wasn't... Like even though we keep seeing the same match over and over, this one this match was was different be, in one key way is because it reveals that you know after they went back and forth, and, you know eventually Damian Priest will win the match. The real gem of the match was at the end where Damian, uh, where Damian Priest was getting ready to go for his signature on uh, for his finisher on uh, John Morrison. The Miz would try to hit use the drip sticks to spray water on him. And because he did, after he hit his finisher and pinned John Morrison, uh, Damian like, you know what? I'm coming after you. I don't care if you're in a wheelchair. And um, so he basically gets ready to go after him, but John Morrison would try to stop him. Uh, but the mid, uh, but Damian would hit John Morrison with uh, a forearm or elbow. I want to say it was an elbow. And um, then would use the drip sticks that Miss was going to use on Damian. On John Morrison, he used all the drifters on John Morrison, and then he basically confronts the Miz, grab him by his uh, t uh, shirt and tie, and tell him like, "I'm about to, you know, I'm, you drip, you pour a war on me, blah blah blah. I'm about to beat your butt." And uh, the Miz finally had enough. It was like, "Man, get, just get off of me!" And he stands up perfectly fine, and everybody's just like, "Oh my God, you was, you're not hurt." And the Miz like, "Uh oh." Uh, did everybody? Did he just realized like I think everybody just saw me get up out this chair. So he get he uh, he realized Damian Priest is like, and then you hear Damian Priest. I knew it. I I knew it. I knew it. I said it, and I knew it. He's not hurt. And you know, everybody sitting there, you know, getting at the mist. You see uh, Damian Priest, and then he looks at the mist, still smiling, and he goes. And then chase after uh he chased after the Miz and the just bolts to the back like to the point where it was so funny that Daniel Priest had to get back in the ring and go, damn he like he way out there. <laughs> but then he would get the mic, basically calls out Seamus, and um say well he was getting ready to talk about Seamus, but then Seamus uh came out and said hey you got something to say to me you say it to my face don't say it when I go to the back there um. Let's see. Yep. So he uh, basically tells uh, Dan Damian Priest basically tells Samus that you're a bully, and I'm gonna deal with you like I always deal with bullies, and that I'm gonna. Uh, he's uh, but it's gonna be different because you have something I want, and that's the United States Championship. So at SummerSlam, I challenge you to a match for the United States Championship, and Samus tells him he better be ready for that. He's gonna whip his ass at um, SummerSlam. So. That match is basically official. So then we'll go. We go to the next match, which is Mustafa Ali versus T-Bar. I think this is the only match. I think this. Yeah, I think this is the only match I really didn't care for. Yeah, out of all the matches in the night, this was the only match I really didn't care for. But uh, I'm like, I couldn't really even tell you what really happened because I, I was zoning in and out. I started talking to people. I started talking to the dub uh, strapped up. And it was it was just uh they, and you don't know who Dub and Strapped Up is. Go look at one, uh, some of my Call of Duty videos, and you'll see uh, them. I play with them in Call of Duty. I actually, got a, one of my videos. I got to win, so go check that out. Um, shameless plug, courtesy of DX. <laughs> but um, yeah, so they uh, I didn't really care for this match, but T Bar ended up winning. I do know that much. He ended up beating uh, Mustafa Ali. Uh, and I think Monsoor was there, and then they, you know, Monsoor basically 
stepped in when they were trying to beat up uh, Mustafa after the match, but he helped say he fought them back off. Blah blah blah. Uh, backstage, we got Red taking a pic. Red uh, Reggie taking a pic. Uh, with, you know, taking pictures with the United States Championship, talking about how he it felt good to be on the other side of the camera for once, because he always had to take pictures for Carmella and Nia. But you know, it felt good that since he's the twenty four seven champion, he was getting the pictures taken. Um, I wasn't gonna really. I was. This was gonna be the other thing I said I didn't like. But then, like, it. it I gotta admit, I kind of, I really did kind of enjoy watching our truth and Akira Tozawa. You know, dressing up as uh, I think Akira was like a delivery person, uh, package delivery person, and uh, our troop was like maintenance, and they both had the same idea to try to get Reg, but it didn't work out, and they end up Reg end up escaping. Um, we would go to a promo with Bobby Lashley and MVP. MVP just uh, talks about what happened last week and that Goldberg lied because I think Go. I guess he basically said that Goldberg said that the reason why he attacked MVP because MVP was threatening his uh, son and MVP said that was a lie. I wasn't threatening your son. I wasn't trying to harm your son. I was just trying to convince him that to convince you. Huh. I hate my camera a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to convince you. I'm trying to convince your... I was just trying to convince your son to convince you not to come to SummerSlam and participate in this match. Because if you do, Bobby Lashley would basically end your career. And um, then... And which Bobby Lashley basically gave him a warning. Um, he, MVP gave a warning to his son. Telling him, don't watch SummerSlam because you would watch the end of the career. Of your father, but the upside is that now you will have your father home with you, and y'all can reminisce about all about the glory days and how you didn't stop your father from taking the match, which in, which ended his career. Then Bobby Lashley would chime in and tell Goldberg that if he really if he fought and he come he falls through with this, and he really comes to SummerSlam and tries to participate in this match, he it, he will regret ch uh, participating in the match. Um. Uh. And then he tell he ends it by telling Goldberg that Goldberg, you're not you're not next, you're done. And then we'll go into the next match, which is Rhea Ripley versus Nikki Ash, which was a uh, or Nikki almost a superhero. Um, uh, it was a good match. I ain't gonna say it was a bad match. It was just it wasn't as good as the Charlotte and um, Nikki Ash match from last week, but it was still decent. You no, know, Rhea showing her dominant display. Nikki Ass having her moments of courage and comebacks, but ultimately it will get disrupted by uh by Charlotte Flair, who will come out and push Nikki off the top ropes, causing a DQ, which means that Rhea, uh, I mean that Nikki uh, actually won the match via DQ, but Charlotte would attack both Rhea and um, Nikki, standing tall, holding up the championship, you know, over both. I think there was a backstage segment too where they asked sorry why she did it, and she basically just said that oh they should have knew I was coming out like if, if they was on my level they was they would have anticipated my attack they would have knew that I was gonna come out and try to attack them they would have and, and would have formed my attack but they're not on my level and that at some time she will regain the uh, championship and then she said so about people criticizing her for losing one match. Um, we would then get to the main event, and then there was a batch day seventy two with AJ Styles before the main event, where he talked how he talked about they're going to dismantle. They said like Riddle Scooter, we're going to dismantle Randy Orton. Basically, trash talking Randy Orton. But we yeah we get to the main event, which is Randy Orton versus AJ Styles, which was another good match of the night too. I think this was like if not the best match of the night, this might have been the, like the second best. Um, but yeah, we you know it, it was a good match back and forth. You know, uh, you have the aluminum, uh, Randy Orton being the uh, jackass, the almost like do he and in an in between beating up AJ Styles, he will he'll take shots at uh, uh, almost you know verbal shots at him. Um, yeah, and then you got the like I said, uh, you got you got to the point where Omos got involved into the match. And Omos basically had to pull. He because I think uh, he was uh, he was getting ready to set AJL for the RKO. Omos pulled him to the side. You know, then him and uh, 
him and Omos get into this verbal altercation, telling him like, "Look, you put your hands on him. That's my job. My my job right now is to put my hands on him, and you getting involved and stuff." He, you know, <clears throat> he said, "What you gonna do? Sit there in that jacket?" And Omos said, "Jack, like, you want something? You want something?" And then, but you know, that that little distraction allowed AJ to get the upper hand for the brief moment. Um, Riddle would come out and attack um, Omos. Was distracted Omos long enough, allowing. Uh, uh, um, I think I think he was going for the phenomenal forearm. Yeah, I just thought I was about to go for the phenomenal forearm while Almas was distracted with Riddle, and Randy Orton would hit the uh, RKO uh, and make like out of nowhere on um, AJ Styles to get the win. And, and then afterwards, uh, AJ uh, uh, Riddle came into the ring, you know, tried to celebrate Randy Orton, apologize to Randy Orton for coming out. He said, you know, I know you didn't want me to come out here, but I, was, I had to come out here to help you with Almas. You know, you know that that just hug it out. That you know the people are asking for it because the crowd was cheering. Uh, I like I forgot to mention too. Um, back at the election match, I just realized when I said the crowd was cheering. When uh, during the election, match, I wanted to highlight the fact that too. One of the things I did like about it was the crowd hijacking the match, saying we want um we want Wyatt we want Wyatt, and it was kind of cool because though Alexa don't deserve it. It, it was pretty much a given that you was gonna have Alexa and uh, her Alexa being like the brontal, the person who takes the brunt of that anger. Um, but yeah, it, back to Randy Orton. You know they celebrated in the ring. Randy Orton got the victory, uh, but he wants to hug it out and Randy Orton like hug hug with you? No, no way. So he basically you know blows he blows off a, uh, Riddle. But Riddle tries to stop. And Riddle stops him and tells him, like, listen to the crowd. That's what they want. That, let's do what the crowd wants. And, you know, they're they waiting on him, like, okay, okay, bring it in. So he, they end up hugging. You know, they go on, you know, raising their hand to the crowd. The crowd is eating it up. You know, Riddle, uh, uh, and uh, Randy's like, you know what? Yeah, the, you know, let's do it this way, too. And they do it like that. And before they get ready to turn the other way, you know, Randy. Right, he's like, yeah, yeah, and then he just snapped his, he slapped his hand away, and RKO's, uh, you know, out of nowhere, he just RKO's Riddle, and just basically just look at Riddle, rubbing his hair, just saying, you'll never, you'll learn one day, and that's, I think that's it, yeah, that's the end, that was the end of the show, it was a pretty good show, decent show, I'm gonna say it was, it wasn't boring, like, like I said, for me, it was only, in my opinion, the only, like, Go get a drink, mom, because I don't really care about this match. It was um, the um, Mustafa, Ali, the Mustafa Ali versus T Bar? But I think other than that, I pretty much paid attention to every other thing except for yeah, everything except for the T Bar match, the T Bar versus Mustafa. That was pretty much the only thing I didn't really uh, tune out of. But everything else was cool, so I give this episode of Monday Night Raw. I give it a, uh I give it a nine. I give it a nine big ups because it was a it was a good show. It was a good show. Besides the one match, it was it was nothing really else I could say about it. You know, some it was I was going to, like I said the only other thing I was, was going to say was bad was the red Reginald moment, but I kind of uh, actually started liking towards the end because it actually made me laugh a little bit to see them goofing it off like that. So I I gave it a pass on this time. This time around, Reg, you won. And this week with the backstage segment, but I I ain't not I ain't gonna like it every time. But this time you it was kind of entertaining and good. So yep, that's it. That's all I got. If you enjoy Monday Night Raw or if you did enjoy Monday Night Raw, let me know in the comments down below. And but if you enjoyed this video, then hit this button right there in the upper right corner for all of my wrestling reviews from beginning to now and if you enjoy this video so much that you want to support the channel because you are a wrestling fan just like me then hit that like button hit that subscribe button become part of the tribe and hit that notification button so you always get notified when i drop videos because i got one more video coming up for y'all after this and um yeah if you enjoy this video and hit any one of these other videos for more of my amazing content i am out but like i said don't go nowhere. Got one gameplay video for you. Got this in the gameplay video for you today. So, peace.